There's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze so as well, as well as my buoyancy PFD, which is important safety, I've got my pack rod. It's also got my wetsuit and stuff in as well if we do a bit of free diving. This, this is it. This is a pack rod. This is actually can compact a lot smaller than this. Quick backstory. I've had this for about three months now. Yeah, about three months. The guys over at Pack Rafts Sverija, uh, they sent me this a couple of months ago to test out. So big thanks to them for hooking me up. I think I've pronounced that right, Sverija? I think it means Packraft Sweden. Anyway, I'll link to this in the description below. But it is awesome, little one-man Packraft. Essentially an inflatable boat. It's been wet where I've uh, cleaned it down a bit. A blow-up bag that helps assist with blowing it up. So it's got a valve just here. Sorry for the wind, guys. I know it's really windy. There's a valve just here. I'm going to use that wind to my advantage to get air into this pack raft. So you just spin this on, it's really cool design. Wind's blowing from behind me, so if I turn my boat around, the pack raft, like that, do you guys see that? Let's get air in it, big swoosh. Look how much air is in that bag. So much more than my lungs could ever get. Then I just push down. <laughs> that fills up so much quicker. Woo -wee. Looking forward to this. If I can undo this top one to add the extra air in, and I don't have to worry about the air coming out, see? It's two ways, so it's locked. But it, uh, this will, sorry, this is the one way valve, so this will only allow air in. The other one was two way valve, so the air could come in and out. But this, now I can relax and not worry about the air coming in. And I can just top it off, which is handy. Sounds a bit sus, a bit like an elephant. I don't have to worry about kind of over, overblowing this in hot conditions, because as the water's still really cold here in the UK, even though it's June, end of May, June. As soon as this touches the water, it's gonna contract a bit. So I don't worry about kind of over, over filling it with air. But that's all done and packed down really quickly, really easily. Super fast with this. I'm, I'm liking it. I can see the versatility of this. They use these over in Sweden a lot because they've got the archipelago and all the lakes over there, which is pretty cool. And then the, the kind guys at Pat Rasperi also sent me some Celtic paddles as well, baby. Down into four pieces, nice and small. It's adjustable as well. Saying that it's not four pieces, I lie. It's five because this is the small middle piece. This is the adjustable piece with the dots. Select whichever length you require. It's all kind of speed release clips. Okay, now I gotta twist them. Okay, boom, paddles ready, boats ready. Honest to God, that was probably less than 10 minutes because I was also talking to the camera. Super speedy, so this is it. Pretty small, right? Packs down to nothing the size of a tent. And it's got all these attachments here, loop attachments. I've taken the spray deck off, but I'll show you some footage now. I pumped it up earlier with the spray deck on, which is handy for the colder water, especially winter times here in the UK. Uh, yeah, more attachment points here. You can put bungees over, webbing. It's got inflatable, I forgot that. It's got a seat here, which is two valves and it's in... One breath, baby. That's the backrest there. Four or five breaths, there's the seat, there's the backrest. Awesome, what you can do, I've seen people is, you can tie your backpack to here and lash it, 
and then pull the whole pack bar kind of round on your backpack like that so your hands are free and you're walking with a raft it's absolutely savage so for those wondering this is the mrs micro raft and yeah big shout out to the guys at pack rafts are eager for sending me it We're ready to go people, we're in a boat, we're in a boat, got my spinning rod, we're a weedless lure, got a GoPro mount there and obviously some water, so I'm staying out here now. Wado's looking plush, see if we can get some fish, maybe even uh, do a catch and cook if we get fish. Yeah, boy, b -b boy, to the sea. There's the ridge for a reef. Basically, we're gonna fish all this bay here. Dustin's gonna drop a net, maybe down here somewhere, just out off the edge of this this reef, and we'll see what we can get. I'm loving this pack raft, man. Proper cool. So just so you know, gear wise, spinning rod for medium light rod, this casts 20 to 50 grams. It's a nine foot spinning rod, bit heavy duty for what I want to catch. I don't know what that is, 2000, no, 4000 size reel, loaded with maybe 15 pound braid, uh, no, 10 pound braid and 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. And that is a little shad swim bait. Well, a little soft plastic lure really. Weighted and Texas rigged because there is so many weeds here. Plenty of leg room for me. I'm only little. Let me show you the let me show you the clarity. Dustin's just launched over there. He's in a different sort of uh, inflatable, kind of a kayak catamaran, which is pretty cool. I'll show you that in a bit. But look, there's a boy here, so obviously rough ground below that pretty deep and we're on the back of a reef and there's the other boy so he's running a line under here probably with pots which tells me there's rough ground and lobster and crabs to be had here we go Dustin's got his catamaran inflatable catamaran kayak here also it's backpack style what have we got what's the setup we have got homemade um, drop nets just like a drop net you'd use on a pier to catch crabs or shrimps but we've upgraded it slightly made it a bit bigger and bait wise, we've got a, well, we've got half a salmon head. So I think that should, you know, with all the brains yeah, and blood that. flowing out of that, that should be really nice, juicy. It'd be like being downwind of a barbecue. Anything that smells it, it's just gonna walk upwind to find the food. That's the idea. And what we do, as we're in a nice deep spot right here, uh, there you go, drop it down. And then this float, it keeps all these three ropes from falling on the net. So the rope, these three bits of cord are always upwards, floating up. And then we simply lower it. It's not very deep here. So I can see it down there, making sure it's sitting down nice and, nice and proper on the bottom. And then what's the tide doing? It is dropping. So I don't need to put any more line out. I'm just gonna put these two safety clips on. There we are. How long are you gonna leave that out for? The idea is to check it like every 30 minutes to no more than an hour. Cause they'll because go, move they'll on. They'll come in, feed and move on. It's yeah. not a trap, it's just a net. The idea is that we catch them and we lift them up as they're feeding. Yeah, awesome. You know what, three, was it three or four days ago I was here? I didn't have my GoPro with me, I wasn't filming, but I caught, the first time I did this, I actually caught a lobster. And it was about a two kilo lobster. It was well within the legal size and do you know what I did? 
I thought as it's the first one of the year I'm gonna put it back hopefully as like a good luck thing and hopefully I'll catch crabs good today man for a good man let's hope we get a boost hopefully so oh. yeah we've got another one to put out bit deeper though okay Let us sink. Nothing yet, folks. There is a crab. Something there. underneath. Oh. oh. No. Is he on top, mate? Hold on. Do you know what? Is that a spider next to it? Do you know what? No. Do you know what that is? That claw is? What? I'm not. I'm not. Is it a lobster? I'm. No. Look at the size of that claw. But I think he's underneath the net, underneath the Yeah, trap. but is he pinching on anyway to the bait? Or it's a big spider crab, but he's underneath. Mate, yeah. Is it... Oh! Oh! Ah! <laughs> Dustin! <laughs> You're right. He's getting... Dustin also. It was massive, mate. <laughs> Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, Jesus, man. You know what, it's a lobster. If I could get my mouth to snorkel... Yeah, 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 you could... Oh! You hang around here. Yeah, yeah, good shout. Keep him company. I'll go get my mask. Did you see the size of him? Did you see the yeah, size? Yeah, it was a <laughs> good lobster. <laughs> a lobster, baby! <laughs> That's worth capsizing for, mate. Oh. I would say. Did, didn't you flip last time as well? I flipped the last time, yeah. <laughs> Just get over excited. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it as Dustin was lifting, it was about three feet from the surface. I saw it falling, it was an absolute beauty of a lobster. And it started falling and his instinct just kicked in and he was going. <laughs> oh, it was so funny, he just went. He's coming back out. Look, he's got his... <laughs> He's got his mask and snorkel now. This guy means business. Look at that power paddling. <laughs> yeah, woo woo. <laughs> we are getting this lobster. Oh, we're definitely getting it now. Oh, that is so funny. So funny. I hope I got that on camera. So I've got some mackerel from yesterday from the freezer, which I defrosted. And I brought in my drop net from home. So I popped home, I don't live too far from here. And I've got four stones, which I'll just lash to the edge of the net. And then I'm just gonna use this mackerel, probably just the top, top head section. I'm just gonna bundle it up like that and then put a lashing on that, like a slip knot. Well, a, a slip knot with a jam knot at the end, so there's the mackerel. Slip knot goes over the top, pull that tight, and then that's it. That'll sit there. By the way, that's what happens to a knife. I wanted to see how quickly this cut this is a carbon steel. I want to see how quickly this would rust. Bring it down to the beach. My cheap knife is only 15 quid or something, that's why I brought it down here. But that that's within 24 hours how much rust you can get on a blade <laughs> on 24 hours. Easy enough to get off just with a wire brush and a drill, but yeah, you don't want stainless, you don't want uh, carbon steel down on the beach in the seaside, salt water, you want stainless steel. So here's the net, and what I've got is like Dustin did yesterday, I've got a bit of driftwood here, curves driftwood, which I've put through some loops on the paracord, so it's gonna hang like that just like that up there and that driftwood's going to keep all these lines out of the way hopefully because driftwood's very buoyant and then I've got more driftwood to secure as a float so let's go for it and see what happens there's not tons of mackerel in there not a big bait so I'm not expecting wonders but you just never know well it sinks so that's good <laughs> feed the line out and the, you can see that driftwood just hanging there actually quite nicely. Just wrapping up some <laughs> bits of driftwood. Very basic. But it'll do. But I'm not I'm not leaving this overnight or anything, I'm just watching it all day. Chuck it in. She floats. So we're lucky there. 
and we'll come back to that net in a bit. Bye bye, catch me fishies. Well, catch me crabs, please. The right kind. The temperature today is ridiculous. It's 30 degrees Celsius. It was meant, it was forecasted 27. But when I pulled up, I checked the thermometer and it's 30 degrees Celsius. It's roasting. I've forgotten my sun cream. I've put some on my front, none on my back. So t shirt staying on today. Yeah, I'm getting a bit shallow here. Anyway, let's hope we can get that. I might go back in and get the fishing rod or do a bit of uh, free diving and swim around and see what's down there. So, got the wetsuit. Don't have a mask and snorkel, just got goggles. This, this wetsuit, I've just put it on. Well, half put it on. I haven't put this wetsuit on for probably since I was 18 years old. It's taken me about 10 minutes to get halfway up my legs. And they're only skinny and I'm only small. So this wetsuit is ridiculously tight. Apologies, ladies. So I'm gonna go out there, have a paddle around. Dustin's out there somewhere snorkeling. And uh, yeah, we'll just see what we can find. That's what they do, is they disguise themselves. Yeah, they're clever. They walk on a seabed, looking like weed. Yeah. Look at that, it looks, it looks like a ball of weed. You'd never actually know if that was a crab. <laughs> <laughs> the net worked, it was worth going back home for. It was. <laughs> Let's hope we get a beastie. As the crab's cooking, there's only one thing to do with the rusty mora. <laughs> That's crack a bit. Oh, that blade's really hot though. Maybe not. Wow. Oh, gotta go and get that. <laughs> well, we come back in from this free dive, little free dive swim, which was pretty awesome. We went and checked my net and we found a small, real small spider crab in there. A little female, sadly, very much undersized. But earlier, Dustin did catch one the correct size, we're gonna cook it up, well, he's gonna cook it up, and uh, he's gonna show you how he prepares it, what to do, etc., etc. We're looking forward to this. It's, uh, it's well earned, <laughs> well earned. I'm gonna half boil it, half steam it, just because it's a hot day and we're running out of water. And I'm just gonna add a bit of salt as well. Oops. Oh. Well, here's our spider crab. To prepare it, we're gonna just open it up, get the legs, get the legs out, and then it'll be a matter of simply hitting it down on the rock and it will die instantly. What I'm aiming to do is to pop the shell off and it will die instantly. And then I'm just gonna continue prepping it, removing this, which is its gut sack. We don't want any of that. So that we can throw back in. These as well, we don't wanna be eating or cooking these up. They can go back in. Remember, everything we're throwing back in, that's gonna just feed all the fish and the crabs as the tide comes back in. So we just remove what we don't want. And this is the brown meat. There's a little bit of brown meat. I'm not very keen on brown meat. So I normally just go for the legs and the claws. So I'm just gonna use my finger and my thumb, remove all that brown meat, and there we are. There's our cleaned crab. Get rid of these bits on the mouth as well. So what I'm now gonna do is just rinse it, and then I'm gonna snap it in half. Give it a rinse, get all that 
What about good meat there? Good meat for some, I'm not too keen. Not too keen. So get rid of that. Now it's nice and clean. Snap that in half and there we have it. We're gonna put them straight in the pot. Bit of garlic, bit more flavour. Throw that in. Now we've got a rolling boil. Put these legs in. And then a little lid. That twitch there, that was just nerves. If anyone's thinking about that still being alive, <laughs> trust me. Happens with fish as well. Happens with fish as well. So I put my little tin foil lid on and then my driftwood extra safety lid. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. 12 minutes and we're gonna be ready to eat. Got some lime as well, so we can crack the legs open, squeeze the lime over it. Ooh, it should be good. Crack on. Dig in. Decent size. Given that the, a lot of the majority of the ones we've sort of seen are fairly yeah, small. This has this been is, the biggest, yeah. yeah. Really nice, man. So nice. Feels so primitive, doesn't it, as well? Yeah. Using a stone to just bash it open and then a, a claw to get the meat out. How about this for a toothpick? Man tooth like crab, man eat food. How about this for a toothpick? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of voices drowning in the sea. There's too many voices talking back at me. There are a lot of choices waiting to be made. Well folks, I'm going to call it a day. It's been a good adventure, a little micro adventure. Thankfully Dustin got that decent sized legal limit cra crab. Uh, the other ones were sadly a bit too small. Nothing else had gone into the bait in my trap following the one that we picked up. But do you know what? Beautiful day. Really nice to get out and paddle. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is just a taster of what's to come. Just a taster. Uh, you know, drop a comment of if you want to see more videos like this, maybe some solo trips as well with a pat raft. I've got some, I've got plenty of adventures in mind, put it that way. But cheers so much for watching, really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out Dustin's channel in the link below, and I'll catch you guys in another episode. Dreams are not